Today we're going to be going over three different grinders. We're going to be going over the Breville Smart Grinder Pro, the newly released Fellow Opus, and the Turin SD40. Now these are all pretty similar priced around the $200 mark, a little bit more for the SD40 depending on the color options that you go to and the different accessories that you choose. Uh, the Breville Smart Grinder Pro is at $200 and then $195 for the Fellow Opus. All three of these grinders claim to do two different things, and that is to grind coarse for pour overs and things like that, or drip coffee or cold brew, but also to grind fine enough for espresso. So all these claim to get you into espresso for $200 with a motor and a burr, and it claims to be good enough to pull shots on most machines that you'd want which I find this really pretty interesting because for the longest time, there really wasn't many options for espresso under $200 outside of the Breville Smart Grinder Pro, which I think I had my first one of these seven years ago. Um, and then I recently picked up the Opus and I've had the Turin SD40 for about four or five months, maybe six months now. But anyway, if you are interested in this content, I just say, please like and subscribe. That helps me really produce more content. If you're looking at purchasing any of these, please use the link below. I'll make a slight commission at no extra charge to you. And I have an Instagram account that you're more than welcome to follow me at. If you're wondering why I didn't do the Baratza ESP Encore, and that is simply because I wanted to minimize the budget that it costs to make videos. It really does cost a lot, and I put a lot of my own money into this, or um, I do accept free items sent to me and Baratza was not willing to send me one because they sent out all their review units prior to. Um, that being said, if you do really want to support this channel, supporting me on Patreon allows me to purchase gear to do more comparisons. But this is what we have right now. I've used the Encore and before, not the ESP, and it is a good grinder and I think that would probably be a decent grinder to throw in here. But anyway, uh, I want to go over the features first on all of these grinders starting with the Breville and then kind of going forward from there. So the Breville has the fine adjustments on the side. That was a really bad sound. And you can just adjust that with a knob. It has the amount coming out um, that you can adjust by simply twirling this knob here. And then you can click one cup, two cup or so on this and then start and stop on that. And it gives you all the grind dial indicators on the inside. Breville has the classic Breville plug with a little hole where you can just kind of simply pull out of, of the socket that way, um, makes it a little easier. And the cord wraps underneath of the grinder. It has an, what it claims to be airtight seal with this going on top and you can remove the hopper on the inside and you can adjust a little bit more settings on the inside of the grinder, but I never really tend to, tend to do that when I've owned this. Um, it also has a little, magnetic tray here to remove the grounds to make it clean, cleaning a little easier. Additional to it, which it comes with three accessories that I don't have with me um, currently, and that is a 54 millimeter cradle, cradle portafilter cradle, and a 58 millimeter portafilter cradle as long, as well as a catch cup for it as well. Um, the catch cup I typically have used in the past to just bring beans back and forth places. It's been nice. Um, I would, it has a lid with a little cap that you can kind of flip open and grind directly inside of that. I did typically just take the lid off completely and poured it in and it does the job that way. The cradles do work nicely. They hold the portafilter directly underneath of it so you can grind directly into a portafilter. I have done this for both the 54 millimeter and the 58 millimeter and I've been very happy with the results and how that works on that. It also has a little button right there that you can click to automatically start and stop your grind so you can just push your portafilter in and turn it on that way. This grinder I am borrowing from a friend but I did own for a long time. A fellow did send me this grinder which is their newly released Opus. Um, so I got this free of charge and it has a couple different features on here. Starting off, the lid has all the grind indication sizes on it which I find very helpful. It also has a two different sides here one which I believe is a rough dose of 20 grams and then 120 grams on the other side. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. It's a little messy here, uh, but that's okay. We have the button to turn it on and off here and it automatically 
turns off the grinder after 30 seconds or if you long press it or something like that you can turn it on to 60 or infinite or something i don't know but 30 seconds is plenty and that's worked well for me it's designed for single dose dosing which this one you could store beans in the hopper if you wanted to but i would still typically single dose with that as well um oh i also i can't remember if i mentioned this has a lock on hopper so you can lock it that's really hard to do one-handed um, anyway, you can lock this grinder on and it holds the beans on the bottom to make it so it doesn't fall out when you want to transport, trans, transfer beans back into the bag and start a new batch. However, it does retain some on the, on the inside and you do have to grind through that in order to put the hopper back on. Anyway, go back, going back to the Opus, it's got this little catch cup here and this catch cup has a two in one feature here. Uh, which if you remove this little cup on the inside, you can then put this lid on it for pour over type coffee. So you grind directly into this and it has two little fins on the inside to help kind of guide the coffee in that way. You can remove that and then you get this fancy little cup that sits on the inside of it. it has a nice little fellow logo on the bottom of it, which is a nice touch. Did not know that, but this has two rings on the inside of it and that fits perfectly a 54 millimeter portafilter, just like so, so you can flip it over. And then a, just dropped a basket there, a 58 millimeter portafilter. So you can grind in it and flip it over and it fits perfectly inside your cup, which gives a clean transfer of grounds. On top of that, it has a magnetic piece right here to kind of help center the cup underneath of the funnel, I don't know, uh, the chute of this. And it works pretty well. It centers is nice. I've made a little mess on my counter, but that's okay. Uh, the cord does not stow in the back, um, but it does have this nice little side design. I'm a real big fan of the way this looks and how short this is on the counter. No bellow system, but this lid fits perfectly and you can kind of push through on it. And that's about what what this is in a term of features. Uh, you can adjust pretty easily with this little dial on the front here. Just push that back and forth. And on the inside, if you simply turn this entire lid, it pops up and you have this blue adjustment ring on the inside, which that allows some more fine tuning of it. And I honestly don't really like changing it very much because you kind of have to push down on both sides of it and move stuff. I, I just, I don't like it. Um, I haven't found a good way to use it. I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt though I didn't read the manual and I'll do a full review on this. You can, just like the Breville, you can pull out the first set like this and give it a little bit quick cleaning and it just snaps in place with a little handle. Breville has the same one. All right, and hopper pops back on pretty easily. Pretty nice and convenient. This is the DF64, DF SD40 by Turin Grinders and uh, this comes in a little bit more, but it's definitely the smallest of the grinders. I actually did put this on my carry-on backpack and I flew uh, to Colorado for my brother's bachelor party. And this was the grinder I brought with me because I didn't own a hand grinder at the time. I have some and we'll review that later down the road. Uh, but this one does pour over and espresso just as well. It has a catch cup here. And if I am correct, it does not fit in a 54 millimeter porta filter but it does fit well in a 58 millimeter porta filter. So putting it on top, flipping it over, nice and easy to do. However, if you have a 54 millimeter one, you can buy a funnel and that makes it work pretty well for that. Um, it's got adjustable stepped, all of these are step grinders, which means that they don't have an infinite amount of adjustments, but they kind of click into place of the adjustments. Um, so this, the Turin uh, SD40, you simply hold this back down, and while the grinder is on and running, you simply turn the adjustment dial. It then has this bellow system with this lid to allow you to push out the excess grounds that may get stuck in it to make this a zero or close to a zero attention grinder. Um, this is the power button, and you just click it, and it turns on. This has a magnetic base but it's not near as strong as the fellow Opus, which that fellow Opus isn't near as strong as the fellow Ode, which is its uh, big brother of a grinder that's meant only for pour over. Um, and it's got this little button on the side. Um, and that is those three grinders in terms of features. Um, so if I'm gonna rate these on a scale of features, 
honestly probably just like the workflow of the fellow opus the best um just because this catch cup is super nice super convenient i do wish this kind of lid didn't have to sit somewhere else um but even if you just put a grind pour over into this and poured it out it still works pretty well this has anti-static grounds which basically means it's very very clean while you use and doesn't make a lot of mess except i do find a lot of chaff inside the hopper area it also has an anti-popcorn piece to allow beans not shooting up so if i started grinding before i put the lid on nothing is going to happen this one even kind of does a little bit here um but i'm going to go ahead and start the the real question and answer the real question of which one should you buy and i'm going to start by telling you which one you should not buy and why so I love the SD40 and I love the Oath. These two are going to be the top ones of what I'm going to recommend. Um, and I, I'll get into that in just a second. The Breville one, I would not recommend. Um, this grinder is the same one that is built into um, all of their machines. That if, they, if you have a Breville machine and it has a grinder, it's, I believe it's going to be the exact same bird geometry and everything from this grinder just built into the machine. Um, you can see that I have the Breville dual boiler behind me. This one does not have a built-in grinder. Um, anyway, but this is the one that's built in like the Barista Express and the Barista Pro and the Oracle and the Oracle Touch, I believe, um, and the Barista Touch. They have a lot of, a lot of special machines now. But here's why I don't like this grinder. Um, it, does, it does a good job. I would use it for pour-over. Um, I'm borrowing this from my friend Riley, and uh, he uses it for pour-over and does not use it for espresso. And I think that's the way to go for that grinder because I was using um, Kyle Rodell, made a new coffee company called September Coffee Co. And uh, I put his beans in there and his beans are great. I was a really big fan of it and I think he's doing great things. But when I put these beans in here, it completely jammed and stalled the grinder. And that reminded me of, of all of the many days that I had this grinder and had that same problem. So typically when you get those lighter roast coffees, it's not uncommon for the grinder to jam and stall and not grind. And that can be a really frustrating thing when it comes to grinding in the morning and you want your shot of espresso and it can't actually do that well. It can do it a lot of the times, but it's not an uncommon thing. I've had this happen in three or four different Smart Grinder Pros as well as a Barista Express espresso machine. Um, so for $200, it was hard not to recommend it because it was about the only option for electric grinders around $200 that you could actually get the fine adjustments. I felt like you could pull a good shot with it when it would grind, but because it doesn't really grind, I can't really recommend this because I've had too many issues stalling and I just wouldn't want to deal with the hassle of it. It does match your other Breville stuff, but I don't think personally it looks the best. They did a great job of the features. I love this. This is, this is my favorite thing about a grinder. I think more grinders should have this little magnetic tray here and um that should be able to just simply push in just like that and the auto stop with that is similar to my arica atom 75 which is a 1400 dollars grinder i love that feature in it it's it's a nice looking grinder it it has nice features but the functionality is just not worth it there so i'm just going to remove this entirely from it and suggest that you look toward one of these grinders or one of the grinders that i'm not recommending or that I'm not doing a review on. Um, I know the Vario, I think it's Vario um, V3 or something like that, which is a, a similar price grinder. I've heard that one has a lot of motor problems as well. Um, you can read more on Reddit. I hope they're fixing that, but I'm not sure. I'm not speaking a ton into it, but I wouldn't have even chosen to bought that one for the review due to the unreliable issues of it. The fellow Opus has no track record. Um, it is brand new. Um, Fellow has a good track record though and great customer service, so that's a plus for it. Um, so I'm not too concerned with this wearing down and I've heard it's really well built. Um, I've had absolutely no stalling issues on the short time that I've had it, which is about a month. I got it pre-released since Fellow sent it over to me in exchange for unbiased review that they don't see. Um, I also did get the SD40 for free as well sent to me um, from Turin Grinders or better known as Joe from Espresso Outlet. Um, now has a page called Turin Grinders as well where he sells all of these grinders. Um, and I have done some part-time contract work for him. Um, that doesn't affect this at all, but I did feel like that was safe to know that I have worked for turn grinders some. Um, but that says a lot about the grinders because I would not choose to work from them if I didn't agree with them. Um, but 
there's two drastic differences in these grinders that I feel like weighs one way to the other. One of the things about the turn is similar with turn grinders is usually it's not un unrealistic to get some quirks with your grinder. Um, early on with the DF64, if you've done some research on that one, it had like people hated the the clumper on it, people hated the uh, grind indication dials on it, and just a few other things which they've made revision students made it better but that it kind of goes over into the turn sd40 as when it has this grind indicator right here when you adjust it it doesn't go to each individual notch on here like it says so you kind of like skip things and it's kind of an inaccurate way to do it also found the grind dial to be off in a way so when i do pour over i'm actually making it more than a full rotation of the grinder before i do pour over and it it does do pour over well um when it comes to the Opus, however, uh, when it comes to dialing an espresso, I find it very frustrating when you don't have a flow control machine. And by flow control machine, ones that you can control the flow rate of the water coming out or the pressure. So anybody with a flare, uh, so if you're going with a, it, with a flare uh, around a couple hundred dollars, or you have a modded uh, Breville dual boiler, which I added a flow control on the side there, which I also did on my other two Brevels, which you'll see I think it might be out or it might be coming out soon where I add a flow control to a $200 machine there, um, which gives you the allowing the ability to change your flow rate depending on your grind size. So if you're off on your grind size, you can kind of compensate with that for the flow rate of it. But I find dialing an espresso kind of frustrating when you have to twist this hopper and um, kind of push down on this blue piece and turn it to get it to be in the right setting for it and tweak it. It does work, it is a solution, um, and ultimately this does make great shots of espresso and you can do it, but I find it clunky in that realm of things. The turn, I feel like it's easier to dial in espresso. I get great shots with this. Um, this grinder actually got me to sell my niche because I thought the niche was way overpriced at the 650 or $750 that it currently sits at. Um, even at used at $500, the workflow and the functions of it is the nicest thing, but the quality of espresso that you get out of it isn't that much better than these two grinders sitting here at $200. Um, that being said, that that is kind of frustrating with the, the jumps on not the perfect grind size indicator on this and also having to go drastically far on, on pour overs in and it just being okay at that versus the Opus, you kind of have the clunky thing on the inside where it makes it a little bit harder to dial in espresso. But the flow, the workflow of this one works well. Um, it just looks aesthetically nice. It's a joy to use. Um, it is cheap and plastic and the SD40 does weigh more and it takes up less space. So that's something to think about. But aesthetically, I do like the Opus better. Um, but here's the thing. It kind of depends on what you're doing to help me figure out what to recommend to you. If you are doing pour overs more, I would choose the Opus. I feel like it just gives a clearer shot, or not clearer shot, clearer cup versus the SD40, which gives it a little bit more muddied of a cup when doing pour overs. If you're doing more espresso in some pour overs, then I would choose the SD40 because I think it's easier to dial in shots and it works a little bit better and you don't have to deal with that internal ring. Um, one thing I do want to note in this decision is I know that there is a new um, SD40 version 2 coming out, which don't quote me on this, but I do believe they changed the um, grind size indicator on there to make it more accurate to what it actually is versus the inaccurate version that it has currently. I don't know what that looks like. I haven't seen it. I think I will have it on this channel at some point. Um, when it comes out, they're also making an SD40 stepless grinder, um, which means that you can fine tweak it even more. And if both of those stay around the $200 price point and you get better grind indica indicator and stepless, it's going to be hard to recommend anything over the turn. But right now, I'm kind of at a draw between these two. Um, I like the way the fellow Opus looks. Um, I, I like the small factor of the Turin SD40, and I like the shots out of both of them, but it's easier to dial in for the Turin and a little bit harder to dial in for the Opus, but the Opus does do 
pour over it better in my opinion and give you a cleaner cup all in all. Um, one thing that I didn't know on it, I did not know on the Opus is right here becomes a lot of scratches on uh, where the catch cup coats. I think some maybe a little piece of ground or something gets underneath the cup and it just drags it on there. What I did was I vinyl wrapped mine. So mine looks black, matte black on it and it's because I had matte black vinyl wrap. Um, so I just simply put it on there and cut the corners of it and it is scratched a little bit, but I do think that made that look a little bit better. And I think it would be way more scratched up based off of the one time that I used it without that vinyl wrap on it. And I did have to cover up the fellow logo on it, but you can barely notice it. Um, you can notice it some on the back because I just did a straight cut, but it's a super easy fix. So I'm gonna try to link the vinyl wrap that I used for that for you Opus owners. Um, and yeah, both are great grinders. If you have one, I wouldn't necessarily recommend upgrading to the other ones. Um, basically, if I'm honest, I would just kind of look for which whatever one you can buy, find a better deal on. Um, Joe at Turing Grinders does um, deals every once in a while on uh, things or open box ones or uh, um, I think you can probably get like a 10% off at Fellow at any time if you're a new customer. I don't know. But these are great, great grinders for $200. Like if I just had one of these grinders, I have a lot of different grinders. I think I have eight now. Um, and these are by far the cheaper ones that I have on my counter. And I don't have a problem going to these. Um, I don't have a problem with making these as a staple and regularly using these. Um, I've really enjoyed the pour over cups from this uh, Opus and I've really enjoyed the shots from the Opus and I've really enjoyed the pour over cups from this and from the SD40 and I really enjoyed the shots from it. As soon as I figured out that you need to go past the filter line and back into the espresso range to do pour overs again, so like a full loop around, I really found that I could get really good pour overs with this even though it might be a little bit muddy, but it's not its not like a bad cup of coffee. It's still very, very drinkable, um, even without creamer or sugar in it for those people who don't drink that. Um, but yeah, you'll be happy with either one of these grinders. If you have any more questions that I can answer on these, um, I would love to do those. Again, this is unbiased, um, and I would pick the SD40 for espresso and the Opus for pour over, um, but I would use them both for both and you're gonna get great stuff and I think you'll be happy with either one of these on your grinder for a, a long time. Um, and I'm excited that you can get grinders now outside of the Breville for $200 um, to start your espresso journey. I know this is an expensive hobby. I know I've reviewed very expensive gear on here and I'm excited that these two showed up in there and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these with what I think is some of the best espresso setups for under $600 that you can get. Um, and both of these are perfect grinders for that choice. And I wouldn't be hesitant to um, recommend either one of these. I'm excited for Fellow to hopefully maybe figure out this internal adjustment. I know that that's a new grinder and that's gonna be a long ways out. But I know Fellow improves things. They've showed that with the Ode, and I'm excited to see where this goes, and I'm excited to see what the possibilities of grinders are a year from now because I never expected to be reviewing this cheap of grinders that I was happy with now when people used to spend a thousand plus dollars to get a niche because that seemed like it was the best option for a single dosing grinder. And now you got things at a fourth of the cost or a third of the cost. So I hope you find this helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching me and enjoying, and joining me on this journey.